Disclaimer. This video might be controversial as it questions established best practices in React. There may be arguments I'm not aware of at the time of creating this video. So don't trust me, think for yourself, comments are welcome. Lifting state up can kill your app's performance, add unnecessary boilerplate and break encapsulation. I strongly believe in critical thinking that was at the root of React's inception. One of the first conference talks introducing React was named Rethinking Best Practices. So in this video we'll honor that tradition, but this time by rethinking React's own best practice. Let's assume we have a parent component that renders a panel and a button. Panel can display a text based on its active internal state, and button should control the visibility of panel's text. This is a very common case in React. When you have a component with its internal state, that needs to be controlled from the outside. Another popular example would be a model with its own is visible state. The most common advice is to lift the state up. Now parent owns the state, it passes is active to the panel and set is active function to the button. The problem is anytime any of your data changes, just blow away your view completely and re-render it from scratch. So when you call set state from the button component, it triggers re-render on the parent level, which will cause re-render of the panel, the parent, and even the button component. Those two re-renders are completely unnecessary. And we can imagine much more nested components tree in which this unnecessary re-rendering would be even more severe. This is of course a known cost of React's design. It's partially handled by implementation of virtual DOM, which makes those re-renders less costly, there are also numerous memoization techniques such as memo or even more interestingly moving state down suggested by Dan Abramov. But in this particular case, I believe this case deserves our full attention because there is a great observation to be made. We don't need to lift up the state and set state function at the same time. We only need set state. Neither parent nor button needs to know what is the state of the component to trigger its change. We can keep set state internally in toggle is active method and assign this method to some ref passed down from the parent. Now the parent has a reference to this method and can pass it further down to the button. The whole setup and connecting components via props looks very similar. The difference is that when the button calls toggle is active, it triggers set state directly on the panel element. So React starts the re-render from the panel level and unnecessary renders of the parent and the button no longer take place. I've used a simple use effect to attach an internal method to the ref and also an empty dependency array because we only need to do it once at initial render, taking advantage of the fact that dispatcher method from useState is referentially stable. In case your method uses some reactive variable like other state, you would have to add it to the list of the dependencies so it won't become stale. We also have to clean up our ref when component unmounts so we don't call set state on unmounted component. The benefit of this approach is that we no longer re-render all the components in the tree. Like a sniper on a battlefield, we are doing a precise targeted re-renders. So the technique can be viewed as a performance optimization, but this is not the only benefit. Better encapsulation is also an advantage. We don't leak state outside of the component, so if the shape of the state changes, we won't need to modify both parent and the child. It also applies to examples in which we could have more complicated logic driving the state change. Like we can only set visibility of the content if some other conditions are met. This logic could be also encapsulated inside the component and the parent doesn't have to know about it. Finally, we can also imagine a case where we have 10 panels with independent states. By lifting the state up, we would have to duplicate the state 10 times in the parent component, or create some Frankenstein state object with 10 separate attributes for each component. Keeping state locally, we can have one state and it will be naturally separated between component instances. So we are getting rid of boilerplate and we are increasing component's reusability. It's almost too good to be true, right? Well, you won't find any references to this pattern in the official docs, but I have found the traces of a subtle opposition. You see, there is a rather unpopular hook that already serves a purpose of exposing internal methods to the outside of the child component. It's called use imperative handle. It works exactly the same as our use effect implementation, 
Besides the fact it uses use layout effect under the hood, so the ref is mounted a bit sooner in the render phase. And it hides the cleanup function as an implementation detail, so it's a bit more convenient to use. React Docs suggests it should be used to expose methods that are using imperative operations directly on the DOM nodes, so things like focus or scrolling, which React doesn't have an API for. That's why it has an imperative in its name. This is probably intended to sound scary and intimidating, cause imperative is generally discouraged in the declarative React world. And if you are not scared yet, there is a big yellow box screaming at us from the bottom of this page. It is sadly a blunt reference to our new pattern. If you can express something as a prop, you should not use a ref. For example, instead of exposing an imperative handle like open close from a modal component, it is better to take is open as a prop and pass it from the above like here. Well, I don't agree. The problem here is that we mix and overload too many concepts together. This is true that exposing imperative DOM operations should not be overused, especially if you try to do with them things like direct DOM node modifications that are already handled by React, so you can get into the conflict with React's rendering process. But imperative DOM operations should be discussed separately from exposing set state functions. The method on the left is indeed imperative, probably should not be used nor exposed. But if we use set state, there is nothing imperative here. We keep ourselves in React's declarative rendering model and we keep top down unidirectional data flow. So, is there any evidence to support this warning? Sadly, I couldn't find any strong arguments. There is one closed discussion in React's GitHub repository where one of the core team members explains it's discouraged because it supposedly makes changes harder to track, because they are no longer top-bottom. They forget to acknowledge that even if you lift state up, you still have the inverse data flow, because events from children have to go up. To be honest, I think this argument is probably written in the context of imperative DOM operations, which is not mentioned by the author. And in our case of exposing set state, it doesn't hold ground. The other argument is the linked article from 2020, which, guess what, also focuses on imperative DOM operations, which is again mixing different topics together. Finally, the React team member also admits that this, and by this he is referring to the pattern of exposing internal methods, has no notable performance issues. So that's good to know. To be fair, lifting state up is still useful in many cases when we need to share state from the child with the parent and the parent is also using the state to render something or when we are syncing state between two siblings because in those cases we can merge those states into a singular entity but it's important to differentiate a whole group of cases when we want to keep separate states we only need to share a state setter not state itself and then doing it via use effect or any other hook that we discussed should be perfectly fine. React is defining uncontrolled and controlled components. I believe this pattern belongs in the middle. Let's call it semi-controlled. Because the parent doesn't provide the state to the child via prop, but it can control the state via state setter. And sometimes this is enough. You can agree and disagree in the comments. I will appreciate the feedback. If you like this video, consider subscribing. And in that case, see you next time.